going to talk about antennas. First of all, what is an antenna? Day to day life, we see many antennas around us. Everybody is having mobile phone, right? So, how does a mobile phone communicate with others or how do we communicate with other people through a mobile phone? And how does a mobile phone is connected to the network through an antenna? So, antennas are used in wireless communication devices. Without antenna, you cannot imagine wireless devices. So, antenna plays a major role in wireless communication. If it is a wired communication, we have a coaxial cable or a optical fiber cable or a parallel wire transmission line. So, without mobile phone, you can cannot imagine your life. Similarly, without antenna, you cannot imagine your life. So, antenna is an integral part of our life. Now, coming to uh, the definition of antenna, according to IEEE, antenna is defined as a device which radiates or receives. A device which radiates or receives. Antenna can also be defined as a device which is acting as an impedance matching device. A device which is acting as an impedance matching device. So, when I say impedance matching, we can remember maximum power transfer theorem. What is maximum power transfer theorem? If the source impedance matches with the load impedance, then maximum power is transferred from source to the load. So here, what does this antenna do? It matches the impedance of the load with the source. Same, same thing happens uh, when it is acting as a transmitting antenna or when it is acting as a receiving antenna, the impedance matching is done. Next one is, it is acting as a sensor. It is acting as a sensing device. For example, if you keep an antenna at uh, near border, we can identify whether any enemy aircrafts are coming towards our side. How do we know that the antenna senses? It uh, takes the electromagnetic energy and it gives the output to the output device. So it is acting as a sensing device. So these are the three main characteristics of an antenna. One is it is a radiating or receiving device. Second one is it is an impedance matching device. And third one is it acts as a sensor. Next one is I am going to explain about what are different types of antennas. First one is wire antenna. Second one is aperture antenna. Third one is array antenna. Fourth one is microstrip antenna. Microstrip antenna. Fifth one is reflector antenna. Reflector antennas. So, these are the five types of antennas. First one is wire antenna. Second one is aperture antenna. Third one is array antenna. Fourth one is microstrip antenna. And fifth one is reflector antenna. So, what is wire antenna? In day to day life, we see a transistor with an aerial or antenna. So, what type of antenna it is? It is an example for wire antenna. You can also have a transistor inside the a, a antenna, inside the transistor. That is, it consisting of a carbon uh, a rod with a copper wire. It is nothing but an example of loop antenna. It is an example of wire antenna. Next one is, on the top of a car, if you observe, there are some antennas. They are an example for wire antenna. For example, uh, if you want to listen to FM radio, what does that uh, mobile phone uh, uh, in instruction gives is, they will ask us to connect a earphones. So, earphones are having a wire with them. So, it is an example for wire antenna. 
and uh, if you see the television or radio broadcasting station they have big big uh, aerials it is an example for wire antenna so wire antenna it is basically a wire which is having many applications the main important thing is this wire antenna is used for low frequencies next one is aperture antennas what is an aperture antenna for example if you take an surface like this in this surface if you take a small area this area will be radiating or it will be receiving so this aperture this area is an example for aperture type of antennas example is horn antenna horn antenna is an example for aperture type of antennas what is a horn antenna most of us might have seen a dth antenna on the top of your house i think maximum people will be observing so what is there a parabolic reflector will be there on the top of parabolic reflector a feeding antenna will be there that feeding antenna is nothing but a horn antenna it is an example for cylindrical horn so horn antennas are used for feeding purpose which are an example for aperture type of antennas third type is array type of antennas array is nothing but group of similar elements what is a uh, it the arrays can be classified into two types it can be a linear array or it can be a geometrical array if you keep the elements in a linear fashion it is called as linear array this is the axis on the axis you can keep number of elements like this then it is called as linear array so what is the advantage of array antennas they increase the directivity directivity or gain which is an important parameter plays a major role for long distance communication especially for satellite communication or radar communication so gain or directivity is achieved through array type of antennas now these arrays can be arrays of dipoles arrays of horn antennas arrays of microstrip or arrays of reflectors any type of antennas can be used the basic idea is to improve the gain next coming to fourth type that is microstrip antenna what is a microstrip antenna it is a popular type of antenna we know in our mobile phone we use the antenna on a ic we already know what is a system on chip soc what is soc system on chip all the components are integrated on a single chip it is called as system on chip so here previous days the antenna is a separate part in a mobile phone nowadays the antenna the antenna is integrated within the circuit we cannot see separately the antenna so what happened to the antenna it has become a component which can be integrated on the chip so what type of antennas we use for this type of uh, for this microstrip antennas so this microstrip antenna is also called as patch antenna what is the basic construction of a patch antenna we uh, take a substrate and a ground plane on that substrate we have a metallic patch the patch can be of different shapes it can be a rectangular patch it can be a triangular patch or it can be a circular patch so depending upon the geometry depending upon the dimensions depending upon the type of feeding we can achieve the desired parameters like radiation pattern polarization impedance matching etc so the main advantage of this microstrip antennas is they consume less power they are having less weight they are 
conformal to the surface they can be integrated onto a substrate they can be used for wearable devices wearable devices for example a small kid is admitted to a nicu so we not we want to uh, uh, examine we want to see his vital parameters like bp and his heartbeat everything so they tie a uh, band to his wrist so through that they measure his heartbeat so that is possible through a wearable antenna so a wearable antenna is an example for microstrip antenna and fifth type of antenna is reflector antennas what are reflector antennas basically reflectors are a plane surfaces there are different types of reflectors corner reflectors parabolic reflectors we have elliptical reflectors we have uh, uh, circular reflectors like that so what is the main purpose of reflector antennas is to improve the gain so by the shape of a reflector for example this is a corner reflector so what we are trying to do we are sending the transmitted signal and this is exactly reflected back this principle is used for radars in a radar what is the basic principle we need to identify the object we need to identify with what velocity the object is moving we need to identify at what distance the object is located in order to identify all these things we need an antenna which can reflect the electromagnetic signals so for that we need parabolic reflectors so parabolic reflectors the main advantage is they all the reflections that are falling on the surface they will be uh, coinciding at one point that is called as focal point so this is the advantage of parabolic reflectors at this focal point generally we place a feeding antenna so while transmitting this feeding antenna will be transmitting to this reflector surface and they are reflected in this opposite direction while rece receiving all the uh, all the rays will be coins uh, absorbed by this reflector and they are concentrated at this particular feed point so these are the advantages of reflectors here this reflector is called as secondary antenna and this is called as and this feed antenna is called as primary antenna normally aperture antennas like horn antenna is used as primary antenna and reflectors are called as secondary antennas so these are all different types of antennas wire antenna aperture antenna array antenna microstrip antenna and reflector antenna next we are going to see about what are the different parameters in an antenna the first parameter is radiation pattern what is a radiation pattern i am going to explain you now radiation pattern second one is directivity third one is polarization fifth fourth one is effective height fifth one is effective area so these are all different uh, parameters related to antennas so when we are designing an antenna for a particular communication system we need to take these parameters into consideration for example you know which direction the antenna is radiating so how do we determine how do we decide which direction the antenna is radiating based on radiation pattern what is a radiation pattern it is a graphical representation of a, a polar plot uh, which varies it is a polar plot of field or 
field or power which varies as a function of theta or pi so this radiation it can be directional or it can also be omnidirectional what is omnidirectional omnidirectional means in all directions what is a directional antenna which radiates in one particular direction only so how do we determine whether it is a directional antenna or omnidirectional antenna based upon this radiation pattern radiation pattern can be given by e of theta comma phi it is a function of Uh, theta phi and r it is a variation of field or power which varies as a function of theta or pi since the antenna is located in free space the coordinates are r theta and pi what is this r the distance from the origin what is theta it is the elevation angle and what is pi it is the azimuth angle next one is directivity what is this directivity it is a very important parameter which is also called as directive gain how do we determine the directive gain of an antenna directive gain is for long distance communication we need a sharp beam because if you want to establish line of sight communication between two antennas which are located at a long distance we need to have high directivity so how can we define this parameter that is directivity directivity is defined as maximum power by average power maximum power by average power according to the definition we can define directivity as the power radiated by an antenna by the power radiated by an isotropic antenna for the same input power for the same input power next parameter is polarization what is polarization it is defined as the orientation of electric field vector if the electric field vector is vertical then it is called as vertical polarization if the electric field vector is horizontal then it is called as horizontal polarization if the electric field vector is having inclined with some angle then it is called as circular polarization nowadays all antennas are made with circular polarization why because if the antenna is circularly polarized it can receive vertically polarized signals or horizontally polarized signals that is the advantage of circular polarization over vertical polarization or horizontal polarization this polarization is a very important parameter in the design of antennas some antennas are designed for only horizontal polarization they will receive only horizontally polarized signals some antennas are designed for vertical polarization they only receive vertically polarized signals next one is effective height which is given by he what is this effective height for example the antenna is having some physical length that is lp now my question is whether the total length of the antenna will radiate definitely not i can explain this using a diagram if i take this length as l this is nothing but physical length now if i take the current distribution on this length l so the current distribution is approximately sinusoidal if i take the average value it is 0.6 of l that means this part is effectively radiating this part is not radiating that means there is a difference between physical length and effective length and always you have to note note down that the effective length is less than the physical length so how do we define effective length the length which effectively radiates or receives is called as effective length similar to effective length we have effective area how can you define effective area this is defined for aperture type of antennas 
in aperture type of antennas i told you that the antenna is having some area so if for example the this is a physical area if i take physical areas ap and the current distribution on this antenna is like this so this arrow marks indicate the current distribution so where the current is maximum there it radiates maximum field or receives maximum field for example in this part it is not receiving so this is not effectively receiving or transmitting so this particular area where the field is present this area is called as effective area so Uh, now till now i have told you about the important parameters of an antenna that is radiation pattern which determines in which direction the antenna is radiating second one is directivity for long distance communication we need highly directive antennas and third one is polarization it gives the orientation of electric field vector and fourth one is effective height and effective area or effective aperture so it gives the information how much the antenna is effectively radiating or receiving so these are all the basic things which we learn in antennas thank you for this uh, time I'm an icon, man. I'm a girl about a 